G'day guys, I'm Dipper and you're listening to Jimmy Sabo on The Good Chat. Okay, today's guest is an absolute legend of our great game. As one of the toughest and most determined players the footy world has ever seen, this man notched up 240 games for the Hawthorne Football Club, collecting five day premierships, four night premierships, a Brownlow medal, and an induction into the Australian Football Hall of Fame. He's also been named in the VFL AFL Italian Team of the Century, and with a media career longer than his famous moustache, he's graced our screens for many years since he hung up the boots and has become an icon all around the nation. It's my great pleasure to welcome the one and only Robert Di Pierre Domenico. How are you, Dipper? <laughs> Thank you, James. Thank you for that nice uh, introduction. I forgot how good I was. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I haven't, I haven't forgotten, Dipper. I mean, when, when I was growing up, Dipper, you were like the, the Italian Superman, and I played Auskick, and you were the face of Auskick at the time, and my non yeah. would always say, this a man, a very strong man. He was the best, <laughs> and you were like a mortal. And... Uh, and like all, all good uh, Italian Australians from Melbourne, you've got a property out in Rye. Uh, what's lockdown like in Rye at the moment? Well, it's like uh, ho hum. It's Groundhog Day out here, but uh, it's, look, it's nice to be out here. I've lived here for a couple of years. I've always been coming down this way for a while. Uh, as you mentioned, all the Italians down here. I think Mum and Dad bought a house here uh, thirty years ago, yeah. or whatever. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's always nice to uh, to uh, spend time down here. But we can't play golf. Uh, I'm surrounded by 15 golf courses. Uh, we can't really go fishing because we're not allowed to go. <laughs> yeah, look, you know, but yeah. it's it's a nice place to be. Nice place yeah. to be. So just talking about the Italian side mm-hmm. of things is that uh, obviously my parents uh, from from Italy, they uh, came out in the 50s. My, my father came in 54. My mother came in 1956. Mm-hmm. And um, But when I was playing, I, I really didn't realise how much of a uh, – of an influence I was for the Italian community yeah. because it, it sort of uh, really helped my parents to live in this country uh, because they would say, you know, people would say, are you, uh, are you the uh, Dipper's mother? Yeah, I'm Dipper's mother and father, <laughs> you know. They were very, very proud, of course. But, uh, you know, the Italian community, I won a lot of Italian awards, Sportsman of the Year. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> and James, you know, when you win these Italian Sportsman of the Year, year after year or, you know, uh, uh, you're amongst the other you know, bike riders and soccer players or whatever. Mm-hmm. When I won my one uh, a few times, um, I didn't get. I got a trophy, which is the heaviest trophy of all time. It's all marble, of course, you know. Um, but I also won a doona <laughs> and a free, yeah, and a free suit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> perfect. They're random awards to win. Yeah, they are. It's a beautiful blanket for you and a beautiful <laughs> suit. <laughs> Perfect. Very Italian awards, those ones. Yeah, very your, Italian awards. Your, your, your parents got married over the phone, though, didn't they? By proxy. That's right, James. Yeah, they, yeah. they were married by proxy over the phone and a couple of brothers married a couple of sisters at the same time or in, in the same village. And yeah. My father's brother stood in for my father. And, um, yeah, so uh, strange times, eh? Yeah, that's right. Was that? Did they both come from the same town? Is it Abba Ted? Yeah, yeah, uh, Abba Ted job, which yep. is uh, uh, in the provincial Pescara, which is Abruzzo. In Abruzzo, yeah, uh, in Abruzzo, and um, they uh, oh, look. It's a little town of five hundred odd people, and uh, there were three brothers there, and there's a couple sisters there. So mm. three brothers, uh, uh, well, two brothers married two sisters. Uh, Mum was one of them, and then another brother. Well, I think it's a cousin, but who knows in that town? <laughs> that's all right. That's, that's normal over there, isn't it? Small town. <laughs> hey, over there in, in um, Abadejo, the, the mayor of the town, his name is Gabriele um, Di Pia Domenico, but he spells it with a D-I and then it separated the P. Uh, is well, that uh, originally? The, yeah, yeah. That's, how, that's our name. It's, it's a D-I with a capital yeah. G and a P-I with a capital P, but it's one word. I, I don't know. My father's always explained, no, no, it's only one word, you know, Di Pier okay. Domenico. So, but uh, the, it's funny though, when you go through uh, the town, I've, I've been there many times, mm. and they, you know, they, they really supported me. I mean, they really don't know much about the game, except my yeah. cousins came out here and that sort of stuff. And, and then they go, but, you know, this guy is a, you know, is a, is a, yeah, you know, a sportsman in uh, in, in Australia, and I've been over there, and I had functions for me. The town come in, and oh, yeah. and uh, yeah, the mayor would you know would bring everybody in and celebrate, and I had ticket parade in the town, which is only one, <laughs> which is only one street. <laughs> it wasn't ticket parade; it was like pasta was thrown at me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, and they gave me this trophy, mm. 
mm. once again made out of marble, right? And it cost me about a thousand dollars to bring it back. <laughs> it was so, it so was heavy. so heavy. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but it's funny when you go around the place, uh, the, the Pierre Domenico's uh, are there, and of course, um, you go to the to the cemetery, you know, to mm. see my my nonna, you know, yeah. who I never met, uh, and uh, and uh, you see Dipier Domenico, Dipier Domenico, Dipier Domenico. It's quite, uh, yeah, it's interesting the, the town itself. Uh, I've always wanted to do a, a, a TV show or, or um, a documentary, and I'm mm. still working on it. Uh, is to go to Italy. And in Europe, and um, and retrace where the parents came from, from the players who played on yeah. the CG. Yeah, yeah, you know, like Silvani's and from mm-hmm. uh, from Verona, uh, uh, Barassi's and whatever. And I've I've done a lot of homework on Libertore just around the corner. Kuda's father um, was uh, uh, sorry, uh, Kuda's mother's Italian. Yep. that's why he he's in the Italian team of the century and mm-hmm. the Greek one. Um, and she's just down at, uh, a town near us and. So it's interesting, you know, Jezelinko, Croatian, and like it's, you know, a lot of history with the yeah. international uh, flavour that we have. I love that stuff. That'd be good if you could do that one day. Yeah, I'll, I'll be watching for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it costs money, of course, but yeah. uh, I'm, and COVID has really stopped us uh, yeah. doing that. But uh, I'm uh, I'm still on the bandwagon for that. Yeah, good. Hey, one of the saddest things I think when I when I look back on, on on your career is that you didn't play for Richmond because your dad originally was working in Richmond. So you could have, if they decided to stay in Richmond, maybe you could have played for the Tigers. Well, funny enough, I'll tell you another story about that. When dad came over, they he stopped in Fremantle for about five yeah. months, right? And uh, couldn't get enough work there. So mm-hmm. in the 50s, in those times, the 50s, Olymp- um, well, MCG Olympic Park was being sort of built because of mm-hmm. the Olympics coming and that sort of stuff. And and uh, so Dad became a you know a, a worker, a labourer. And about four or five guys hired or rented a, a house in, in Richmond before Mum came home, of course. And then when he got married, he bought a house in Hawthorne, yeah. just up the road. And, uh, of course, that's how I ended up in the Hawthorne zone. So mm. that's you just said, could have been a Fremantle player. You could have been a Fremantle player. And, but <laughs> I reckon if you had your choice, you might have picked Collingwood, but your dad basically uh, sold you to the Hawks, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I did both for, uh, uh, sorry, for Collingwood yeah. and Peter McKenna and all these sort of great names, Wayne Richardson and Max Richardson. And, yeah. you know, I played three games a weekend for junior football, but every time I had a chance to go to Victoria Park, I'd just run from home to Victoria Park because, you know, Hawthorne, Richmond, Connie, there's just suburbs next to each other. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I remember uh, coming up from school one day and uh, all of a sudden there's three gentlemen on the other side of the table, there's three empty homemade wine homemade wine bottles, you know, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> mum's in the corner cooking pasta and <laughs> uh, I thought it was three policemen looking for me or three fathers, yeah. but <laughs> it was uh, – it was uh, three gentlemen from the Hawthorne Football Club, and uh, Dad, Dad, um, you made up his mind pretty quickly. He sold me to Hawthorne. Yeah, he actually sold me. He go, he go. I said, Dad, what's going on? He goes, well, three. These are gentlemen who want you to play for Hawthorne. But, but Dad, you know, I play for Collingwood. No, yeah. I sold you today. <laughs> <laughs> How, good is that? How much did he get for it for you? Uh, I think he got about four or five grand for it, yeah. like in the paper bag back in the day, and and. Um, and they left, and, and, and they left with salami, a, a, a oh, yeah. prosciutto, and they, <laughs> and they still talk about it today. You know, yeah, yeah that's so good. So when, when you walk in there, though, at the club, there's obviously guys like Michael Tuck, Lee Matthews, Don Scott, you know, Calvin Moore, and you and you rock up there, I guess, with your school bag. How, how's that for a youngster? Uh, it was quite intimidating in a way mm. because you know you you, you don't. You, you, you know, in follow Hawthorne, of course, but mm. what Hawthorne did during the school holidays and when we were 14, 15 and 16 was get the kids around a metropolitan area and get the kids around the country area and they mm. would take them down to Hawthorne for a two-week camp at Hawthorne. Okay. Yep. So I was invited to go to that. And, um, and you know, guys like Brian Duge and Don Scott will talk about, you know, fitness and things like that and and then we'd do some, some ball work and, and then at the end of it was Country Vic versus, um, uh, you know, the Metropolitan kids. And, you know, I ended up getting best on ground in one of those games. And the boys had just arrived from Tasmania. And uh, and Peter Crimmins came up and just said, welcome to the Hawthorne Football Club, um, mm. you know. 
if uh, if you embrace Hawthorne, Hawthorne will embrace you. I mm. mean, what does that mean when, when you're 16, 17 years of age? And yep. then you see Lee Matthews and Don Scott, Calvin Moore, Peter Knights, you know, all these great players going through. And next thing, John Kennedy walks out. Yeah. Welcome, son. Welcome. You know, you know, you know, wow. Yeah. What's that voice? And then you know, I remember going out training and, uh, you know, who – who should know I was going to be there for 18 years of my life. So That's yeah, right. it was a great time. Yeah. Hey, when Peter Crimmins first greeted you, did, did you agree then just to use Puma boots for the for the rest of your career? So basically Peter Crimmins was the state manager for uh, for Puma. Yeah. And, and I remember Peter Knights uh, was working for Puma. John Henry was working for Puma. Um, and there's some other that guys there as well. But he, uh, he asked me and Rodney and that, would you like a pair of boots? So I go, well, how much are they? <laughs> he goes, well, they're for now. I said, well, that's a there, mate. Uh, oh, Dip, you just cut out there, Dipper. So he gave, gave me a vinyl bag, gave me all these cream stuff. And, you there? Hello? Sorry, yeah. I got you back now. So, yeah, right. you just said... Sorry, um, so I was just saying... Um, I got some boots and, and uh, you know, all the all the paraphernalia of Puma. He just said, "Look, just do me one favor. Just while you're playing at Hawthorne or while you're here, while you're you're playing, I just wear Puma." And I, I shook his hand and I wore Puma for 17 years of those 18 years. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Uh, you make your debut in 1975, and you you replace Lee Matthews of all people. I think he wasn't available, so you got the call up. But you're on you're in the paper. You're you're in the age as a 17, 18 year old Mike Sheehan writes an article. How's that for you and your family to be in the age before you've even played a game? Uh, it was amazing. It was front page of the age. Front page, and actually, yeah. And I actually spelled Dipia Domenico down the the garage brick wall. Yeah. Right? And, I, and I'm leaning up against it. And they actually spelled the name wrong. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the Mike Sheen, it was the first time I met Mike Sheen. And, yeah. Um, and uh, oh, look, yeah, can you imagine? going to play your first game and you're on the front page yeah. of the biggest paper, the age, like you're the big page. And uh, yeah, you couldn't stop looking at it, you know, then the old 90s man that day. And mm-hmm. uh, that's right. Lee Matthews was, um, was uh, not available because he had an injury and I replaced him. And, uh, and I came on the ground ran about, I think halfway through the first quarter. Yeah, and yeah, and you got a few kicks, I think, as well. So it was good to get your first taste, and then you had to wait in the reserves. You you play your second game in 1978. Now this season, mm. unbelievable because you win the flag as well. You're best on ground in the grand final, but and you say I was born to play finals. Is it true though? In the parade, I think it was the day before, and and Ron Barassi asked you what yeah. your name was. Yeah, what did you say to him? I said you'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> and, and uh, it was quite interesting because back in those days, it was one of the early parades. Yeah. And we used to go to Maya, that's on Maya, and then go in, in, into Maya, have a sandwich or so, you know? Okay, yeah. Uh, it was our first parade. I, 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 I think the parade was, it, it was one of the first parades. And, and Ron Barassi came up and said, what's your name, son? I said, well, you'll find out t- tomorrow. Now, back <laughs> in those days, when, and still today, I had a very bad stutter. Right? Okay. And yeah. I, I go, you 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 find out tomorrow, <laughs> and then bring on years, and you know, and then um, at one stage I looked like I was going to go to bet. I was going to go to Melbourne or Essendon. Okay. I was a bit of a naughty boy, at Hawthorne, and then, um, but then when Ron turned seventy years of age, nearly fifteen years ago, now I did Kokoda with Ron Barassi. He, he asked me to come along and, yeah. and did Kokoda with him. So, uh, and, and we've had a great relationship, uh, yeah, virtually since that day. Yeah, he That's denies right. it. I said, no, no. <laughs> he, he said it. <laughs> so, so how did you get that confidence, though? Were you, so you never got nervous before games or anything? You just was all, you were always that confident? Oh, I was always lucky, though. I'm hyperactive, yeah? And that's, and that's basically it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I just, I've got that much energy that... Uh, that I do everything and anything, and sometimes I stuffed up, and sometimes I didn't. But one thing I could do, like I was playing three games a weekend, you know, when I was a young kid, and playing seniors and, and under seventeens and under fifteens at the same time, basically. Yeah. And um, and even in my whole life, I've been very hyperactive. So I just put myself out there and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. And and you put yourself out there and you play 
uh, seven grand finals in a row leading <laughs> up to the 89 grand final. Now, but mm. before I ask you about the 89, because it's obviously the most famous, but midway through the 80s, footy changed a lot. Now, I know the diet changed. You had Karen Inge come into the club, change your diet. But also, I think you were a tyre fitter um, before the mid-80s and then you decided you're going to go professional. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, dude, that's right. Uh, um, so one of the things about Hawthorne or well, all club, they try and get jobs for their players, you know, yep. so they can work during the day. Because back in those days, you worked during the day, you come at five o'clock, yep. you, you, you had to have your boots on and everything ready to go at five o'clock, which is starting to get dark and mm. there's only one light at Glenfrey Oval and we train <laughs> under that light, you know. It's funny how uh, it all um, uh, ends up that way. But, yeah, so I was a tie fitter uh, and I loved it. Actually, and even today, I know how to change a tyre, which is terrific. And every time I see someone struggling, even today's uh, mm. cars, I, I always stop and say, Listen, don't worry about that, I can do that, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. But um, it was around about uh, – <clears throat> well, that was my, one of my first jobs, you know, 17, okay. 18 years of age. And then I said to myself, I said, look, you know what, I, I think I, I, you know, I'll, I'll go professional because professionalism didn't really come into the AFL. It's around about – 85, 6, 7, where diets were changing and mm. and the way that you approached the game was more, you know, professional. Uh, you know, the Players Association was 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 sort of around the mark. I think we, we all paid $40 to be involved in this association where you got a T-shirt, but you're too scared to talk up against the club for new, you know, new contracts or yep. whatever because you always thought they're going to get the, you know, the boot. Uh, but things were changing all the time. And I suppose in those mid-'80s, you mentioned about you know, diets or whatever. Karen Inch came to the club and um, she had been a Collingwood, but she mm-hmm. came to the club and and she really changed. We went from eating, you know, steaks and muffins and that to bananas and peanuts, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we were stronger, faster, and, you know, that that really helped us as a club. And, uh, you know, when you think about seven grand finals in a row, should have played 1990 as well because we got – we beat Collingwood by 76 points – in, in, the, in the last game of Waverley before the finals mm. come, and Melbourne beat Hawthorne twice. I didn't play, Ezzy didn't play, and a few others didn't play that, that those two games because we were injured. And uh, and then, of course, the boys win 91 as well. Yeah. 86, though, was was your was an amazing year for you personally obviously you win the Brownlow but you win the flag against Essendon after they'd won two in a row and you for that Brownlow medal you're paying about 50 to one I think going into that yeah. did, you, did you expect to win that ah uh, no you never expect to win the, the medal um I think this year's count was fantastic I think uh, yep. those players are really they're just so close to each mm. other and that's why I think it's been a great grand final coming up you know but yep. Um, when you go to a grand final, it's uh, it's it's exciting. But when you've got a Brownlow on the Monday for seven years in a row, mm. <laughs> you can't drink, you can't do anything you want because yeah, you're yeah. playing the grand final. So you're used to sort of uh, 1986 uh, when we rocked up. We trained at uh, we trained at the MCG prior to the Brownlow. That's one thing you can do playing in the grand final. You're allowed to train at the MCG mm-hmm. on the Monday. And then we went to the Brownlow, and, and back in those days, I, I lived out in in, in, in Baronia and whatever, so I had to go home, pick up the wife, and come yep. back in. And we were late, and <laughs> entrees had been served, and I looked up, and I had a couple of votes, and you sort of think to yourself, you know what? Um, uh, yeah, I got a chance here. <laughs> yeah, there's a few games, but then again, yeah. you don't expect to win the Brownlow. But I remember the last words, James, that Alan Jean said to us at, mm. at the MCG. Now, listen, Tucky, Platt, Brereton, Gipper, if I see your face, if I hear your voice on the TV or, or radio, I will get, I will, I, 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 I'm going to give you some hooly dooly, right? You know, <laughs> because we lost in 84 and 85. Yeah. And 86 were against Carlton, right? And uh, so, of course, I go to the Brownlow and I win the Brownlow. <laughs> and on the front page of every paper and helicopters over my house. And, <laughs> and the first thing I, I looked at when I, I made the remark, I only came here for the free fee. Yeah, yeah. I looked down and Yabby's got his hand in his face. You know, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but the next day when I rocked up to Hawthorne, yeah. imagine being this Italian young fella, being there, you know, just eight years or nine years or so, mm. and then all of a sudden he wins the Brownlow. Mm. I, 
uh, with his mates Dermot Brereton and Platten and all the Bacchanar and Dunst, all these blokes, and Lee Matthews, you're thinking, why is it me? 10,000 people at Glen Free Oval, and I yeah. run out there, everyone claps. <laughs> and Alan Jeans and Alan Jeans got the guys together and said, now listen, son, what you did last night was absolutely fantastic for the club, <laughs> but we've got a job to do. But yeah. now you, you have the responsibilities of being a Brownlow medalist. And I thought, mm. oh, no, more responsibilities, you know. <laughs> so I always remember those words. And, um, uh, yeah, look, you know, it's, uh, it's a time go by now, but I, I, I love the uh, – I love the the, the Brownlow uh, night now because mm-hmm. I didn't go for many years. Uh, yeah. But, but now I know that I belong to a great club. And I'm really yeah. – uh, there was a book, James, called the Brownlow Medal book. Mm-hmm. And I went around Australia and got 100 books signed by every Brownlow medalist. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I got to know who they are, their families and whatever, and I just love it, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And the first Hawthorne player as well, you were to win the Well, Brownlow. at the time it was. And yeah, then the time, uh, yeah. uh, Cole Austin, obviously, wore the number nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Crawford wore the number nine. I wore the number nine. Um, you know, Platten wore uh, forty-four, and Mitchell's five. And yeah, mm-hmm. so it was interesting. Yeah, you were saying with Jeansy then, he'd tell you no media, that sort of thing. He was a fiery character. Did you, you had a a little bit of a scuffle with him one night at selection night? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alan. The thing was the arrogance that I had. You know, <laughs> that I got best on ground in seventy-eight. Right. Yeah. So if you have a medical, people got to know a little bit more about who I was. So it was yeah, the 80s, mate, was just about to come around there. Disco ball, the, the, the drink cards, you know, just got my licence. And, you know, yeah, you're going around town pretty pretty chuffed, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, when Alan Jeans first came to the club, I, I, I felt, you know what, I'm not quite sure if he's going to like me or not. So we used to have these uh, confrontations, just like having a new manager. It's like yeah. having a, someone new in your family, you know, and I thought, Anyway, one night you're you're reminiscing to um, about eighty five, I think it was, and um, no, 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 it was early eighty three. My apologies. Yeah, yeah, he, he came in eighty one, and uh, early eighty three. One night, I played against the doggies the, the week before, when Russell Green was on the bench. Him and I were on the bench. We came on and and we did pretty well. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I thought I'd go and be in the side. Now back on Thursday nights at Hawthorne, they used to have a a trainer's room where all the trainers will sell raffle tickets, have a few beers. Uh, some of the supporters will go in. It was all about the footy trip back in those days. They could raise money to go on the footy trip. Yeah. But all the players will go in, grab a dim sim and have a, a Coke or whatever, and then you know, buy a couple of raffle tickets and off you go. Yeah. But this night I went in there and one of the great legends of the club, Bobby Omens, big rotund guy, and mm. he said, oh, Dipper, as he's sweating over the dim sims, you know, Dipper, I've just been in the coach's room and you're not playing this week. I go, what? Yeah. So I said, I'm like, give me a scotch, will you? Anyway, yeah. one scotch, another scotch, the bottle went like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I had about 70, 80 people in front of me and I, I had them eating out of my hand. Yeah. I'm going, I'll tell Gigi what I think of him. He can't come to my club and tell me <laughs> I'm not playing. <laughs> And then he walked in, and yeah. at the time, he's, he's sergeant of police at the time, you know, in, mm. in the police force, and everyone just gone quiet. He looked at me and said, what the bloody hell are you doing here? I said, thank you. Don't, don't you talk to me, you <laughs> policeman. <laughs> and he yeah. said, listen, why don't we go and have a chat about this? I said, yeah, why don't we? So we went into the coach's room, and uh, he threw me around the room, and, <laughs> and then he put his elbow up. Up to my up to my throat, yeah. And he did, and then I sat and I went. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to play football. And then that was sort of like you said, you want to play football? Well, you're a disgrace to the club, to all the people that represent you, all the sort. Of, and I'm going, yeah. oh, I don't want to play football. <laughs> but but two two hours later, you know, he um he just sort of gave me a bit of a line. He said, look. You know, I want you this club. I know mm. Sheedy's looking at me. I know Barash is looking at me in Melbourne. And, you know, I'm going to give you five weeks to prove to me that you want to play for me and mm-hmm. the club. So I played in the reserves for five weeks, then came back out and, you know, history shown. Mm. Yeah, that's it. So he was, he, he was like a, was a father figure to you? Oh, you father. Said? Yeah. It, it yeah. was a father figure to us all, but we yeah. all had our little <laughs> run ins with Genzi. Loved him dearly, <laughs> even to the point when. Couple of weeks before he passed away, we went out to see him at the home, and and he wasn't well. He had 
he had, you know, like tubes up his yeah, nose yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, done saw myself and Peter Cohen. I, and young Buddy Franklin was in there okay, with yeah. young Birchall and a couple other guys. I think Luke Hodge was in there as well. And as soon as we walked in, Yabby goes, he's in his pyjamas, in a wheelchair with, you know, an yeah. uh, 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 oxygen bottle there. He goes, ah, oh, my... Ah, oh, my favourite players here. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> Dunstall, Dunstall. Right? Oh, Dunstall, Dunstall. This, Dunstall that. <laughs> what you did for the club. What you... <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going, hey, what about me going now? Yeah. Listen, I knew, uh, yeah, if you can't bounce the ball, don't bounce it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then he went on about half an hour about me. Do you remember the time this? Do you remember the yeah, time yeah. that? And um, so I said, buggy so I took his tubes out of his nose. <laughs> <laughs> And I said to him, I said, that's it. I've had enough of you. So I've taken his tubes out of his nose. And he said, if I died right here, I'd be the happiest person. I know that you'll do mouth to mouth on me. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, look, is it? And then we found out he passed on about a, a week later. And it was the saddest yeah. day. It was really sad. Yeah. yeah. Loved him. Loved him dearly. And he loved us. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, he, he just he, he just knew. I mean, what I've learned from Alan Jeans and John Kennedy and David Parkin is how I live my life, mm-hmm. you know? There's certain things that never leave you from that club. And I was yeah. very fortunate to work, to be at our family club and that, and that, you know, I can walk in there anywhere and people know I come from Hawthorne, you know, yeah. and what Hawthorne yeah. stands for. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah, mm. right. And something else people will never forget is obviously that 89 grand final. Now, this was an incredible story. So the first term, you back back in a pack. And Gary Ablett gets you in the ribs and you break your ribs, you puncture your lung and you play the rest of the game out and you win the game. You spent eight days in hospital after, afterwards, you're in intensive care. How did you do that, Dipper? Uh, adrenaline. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the, the, the purpose of winning. Mm. Um, even though we made seven grand finals in a row, which is you know, incredible when you think about it. We, and we won those night games as well, the night grand yeah, final yeah. as well. So if there was a grand final to be played in, we, we were going into playing the grand final. We never, never, never put a second team in. We always put in, you know, a good team to win. Mm. That's what Hawthorne was about. Um, but we, you know, we won 83 and lost 84 and 85. Then we won 86. And there's a story behind that as well. And there's 87 we lost. And in 88 we won. So no Hawthorne sides ever won back to yeah, back. Back to back, yeah. Uh, the great clubs, Richmond, Collingwood, Melbourne's, you know, Carlton's, have all done back to back in the history of the game, and still you know, a lot of pressure of 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 getting up there in the grand final to win. Um, so the willing to win, the adrenaline, and playing a grand final, James. Uh, you know, yeah. What you play for, mate. You don't get injured or suspended or all the bullshit you go through because you just get into that one game, one game in your life. Mm. And uh, we were we were certainly, you know, pushed hard in, in the early term by Geelong. They had an idea of, uh, of trying to put us out quickly. But, you know, strong-minded Dermot and strong-minded everybody, in, you know, and both uh, with Geelong, it became a classic game. Gary Ablett, senior, kicking nine goals straight. I mean, what a... What a game. And, uh, you know, I think about it. I don't remember much about it. I mm. haven't seen a lot of it. I've only seen it a couple of times and maybe a lot of the highlights, but I don't sit down and watch them or whatever. So, but it was just, it was just an amazing time for the club to win back to back. It was great. When you, when you got hit in the ribs, dip, what did you feel? Was it too much adrenaline? Did you feel the pain? What did oh, it feel like for you? No, it was pain. It was everything. But I didn't realize I punched in my lung. Yeah. Until around about halfway through, when at halftime I went into the went into the rooms, and I, and I was usually that guy up the front with Alan Jeans, you know, so he could look at me in the eye or yeah. whatever. But this time I actually went to the toilets and uh, sat in the toilet because my body was imploding, and I could you know, I could feel my body like uh, you know that bubble wrap, you know, I could, uh-huh. I could feel that, and I'm thinking, what's going on? And my voice was really high, and I'm going, yeah. what what's going on here? You know, yeah. and I remember. Just sitting there, and then all of a sudden, right out, Jimbo, come on, coach, you need you. Right out, let's go. And I, I didn't want to come off the ground. Yeah, being arrogant, you win, lose, or draw, you want to be with your teammates. And you know, grand final will make you or break you. Uh, the MCG makes you or breaks you. That's it's what the day's all about. You are remembered 
not at the time I was I wanted to be remembered, but you're remembered on that ground what you did and what you didn't do, right? Forever. Jezelinko, your beauty and you know, great marks, to great goals you the kick or no goals or you know, smothers and all those things, those one little things, you know. And then um, I went out again and and uh, you know, lasted the game. And I remember Tucky. I threw myself on the ball in the last minute of the game, mm-hmm. the last second. I was the last person to, to, to touch the ball in 1989, and that was the last game for VFL before I went to AFL. So I've got that little, uh, <laughs> the little trivia question there. Yeah. Um, and I remember Tucky picking me up off the ground, and I was just – I was gone. Yeah. And he had a split webbing all the way down his hand, and blood was pouring out. <laughs> And he goes, we've won, we've won. He, he just squeezed the last bit of breath I had and mm. ended up in hospital. And yeah, you know, that's a, you know, would I do it again? Of course, of yeah. course I would. Yeah. And I went to Magnetic Island for, for nearly two months. The club sent me up there to, to uh, relax and get my strength back. Mm. I came back all tanned with gold chains on a white <laughs> suit. And I had to go to the tribunal because I, I knocked out Gary Hocking. Yeah. Uh, and um, and I got five weeks for it. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I said, come on, what happened to me? You know, and, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, look, you know, would you do it again? Of course. Yeah. Of course. A bloody yeah. oath, of course. Yeah. Did Jeansy Jeansy apologize, didn't he? Because he had a go at you at three quarter time or something. At three quarter time, he actually said these words and the players laugh about it. Now, listen, Dipper, no one's ever died on the football field. Can you keep going? But he didn't know that I was crook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't know because I because uh, Bruns and a few of the guys are starting to get a few kicks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and all my buddies are going, he, he nearly did. <laughs> he nearly did. That's but, then right. it, but then he came into the hospital like all my mates did and um, he apologised to me. He said, I'm so sorry. What you did for the football club is just amazing. I, I will never forget this day. I'm going, that's all right, mate. It's all right. I made you. It's okay. You won another premiership, you know. <laughs> yeah. Did I remember you- the Hall of Fame night at Hawthorne. It was – John Kennedy Senior, David mm. Parkin, Alan Jeans, and my first coach, a guy called John Fisher, who, mm. um, who coached at the at the Amateurs. He, he played for Hawthorne. And I got, I got a photo of the four of them. And I said to him, I said, what's one thing that you guys got in common? Mm. And they said, well, we're all coaches. I said, no, nah, I made all of your breaks, all right? You know? <laughs> anyway, John Kennedy, miss him dearly. He still remembers. He goes, I remember the night. You say, I made all of you blokes. I still <laughs> laugh about that. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Did, hey, did, you nearly lost an ear, didn't you, in the mid-80s as well? Yeah, yeah, my ears sewn back on. Uh, one of the yeah. boots of a St Kilda player uh, came over it. And, you know, when the trainer comes over and they go, uh, oh, mate, you'll be all right. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you better come off the ground. <laughs> my ear was hanging off like that. Hanging off. Yeah, so I got a cyst up that night and um, hmm. and uh, in a – End up wearing a headband, a little oh, tumor yeah. headband. So I had a had a few footy cards with a headband on. But uh, yeah. oh, I've, I've had broken sternum, my ears sewn back on. I've had yeah. you know had all the operations. But would you do it again? Oh, love yeah. To. I always wonder, like you guys were so successful, so good, so determined. What was it about that group that that made it so good? And also, I mean, the training. You explained the training. Like every time you trained, it was a hundred percent. Like Tuesday night, you bring the mouth guards, that type of thing. Was it because of the training and the, that determination? It was. It was just a great time to be alive. Yeah. The eighties, like it was. You know, the the disco boy. There's no phones around. You can go out and, you know, we're young, young fellows who were, you know, playing a football and, and we're training hard and you know, yeah that's right it was mouth guards in and the way mm. we went if you got hurt you got hurt and that's the way it was and but it was a good age that everyone got together and we stayed playing together for, for a good 10 15 years and mm-hmm. you know, we only added one or two players a year and that was the, the, the sort of the strength behind it all we all knew each other we we you know it wasn't that you know um I'm going to devote my life to you sort of things yeah. as the players do today. We knew what we were doing. Mm-hmm. And we knew when we played, we played for each other. When we went out partying, we partied hard. When we went uh, anywhere, we, we, we travelled well together. It was really good. Yeah, loved it. Great time. And that was a great success, you know. Yeah. And the leaders of the club, you know, Parkin and these sort of guys, they, they just, you know, made sure that we spent a lot of time together, which is really good. 
Yeah, there was during the during the eighties. You had that famous rivalry with Essendon. Obviously, was there a oh, time okay. when um yeah, Love it was it. it was great that you know you guys went at each other hundred percent. Was there a time that Sheeds because Sheeds and Jeans you didn't get along? Was there a time no. Sheeds he said uh, he accused you guys of cheating or something? Yeah, yeah. What happened was, uh, and that's why Jeans didn't and Jeans and she didn't get on. Yeah, because Kevin Sheedy's obviously you know. <laughs> Kevin Sheedy was fantastic, just the way he, you know, he tried to get, a, uh, you know, people upset or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Gigi was a sergeant of police, and he, and he accused us of having drugs. And what would happen? Big Bobby Owens, the same guy I was talking about before, yeah. he'd have some um, eucalyptus oil or Vicks on yeah, his yeah. Uh, on his chest, and we will go up and go. Oh yeah. Game, right? yeah, 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 <laughs> he yeah, thought yeah. we were smoking <laughs> cocaine or something. <laughs> anyway, one of the one of the uh, well, they used to have people go and watch us train and mm-hmm. they sit in the stands. And of course, we could see them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'd be taking notes and they, and when, at train, we should, we should go, you know, just, oh, let's go, you know. Yeah. And before a game, let's go. <laughs> and, and the headline was, you know, Hawthorne, a, 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 a drug cheats and whatever. And Gigi was ravable about it. Yeah. Know? You know, because he was obviously sergeant police. So, yeah, that was a great rivalry. Yeah. Loved it. Absolutely yeah. loved it. You, you had a great rivalry with Dougie Hawkins as well. Yeah, but you, you yeah, played right, hard right. against each other, but didn't you used to uh, get on the quaddy together as well during the yeah, game? Yeah, we used to ring each other up uh, the day before when the, the doggies had played Hawthorne. Western yeah. Oval, he put the quaddy on, or I'd put the quaddy on if it was a Princess Park or whatever, away from yeah. And um, we used to put the numbers on our hands. and <laughs> At the same time, playing it, we used to look at the scoreboard and see if the horses came in. Uh, oh, did they? They used to show it on the scoreboard, did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah back in the day, you yeah. have race five, number six. And oh. I'd be going, thank you, thank you, you got the first leg in, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but one time we actually got the quaddy, mm. and Dougie, Dougie was on the boundary line. He had the kick over me, but I knew what Dougie was going to do. He's going to run towards me. He's going to show me the ball. I'll get mm. sucked in, go for the ball. You know? Anyway, we were at Princess Park. He's kicking towards the, the Robert Heatley stand on the left hand side. And the scoreboard's on the right over here. Yeah. And Dougie, it's about 15 points of difference. And Dougie's coming in. And I said, Dougie, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> the scoreboard, the last leg's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> and he stopped. He went back, put the ball down, pull up his socks. You yeah. know, the umpire, come on, Dougie, get a go. And he goes, right oh. I said, Dougie, we got the quad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he kicked the ball. It went out of bounds in the full because yeah. he went took it. And all you saw Dougie after kicking that ball, you go, yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. It was hilarious. Oh, yeah. that's so good. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, good good times, Differ, but you, you had heaps of good times as in, you know, success-wise as well. Do you have a favourite moment that, that sticks out to you? Look, I think uh, I think it's playing the game, like just yeah. playing the game, like the, you know, the locker room stuff. And mm. you know, I heard Sean Berg on the other night on the Brownlow saying – you know, what you're going to miss? You're going to miss the locker room stuff. That's what it's yeah. all about. You go, you go into your locker and you might find things from players that put in there like an old chicken or whatever it is, you know? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's just that stupidity of what around footy clubs. But you just you, – you miss that. But, mm-hmm. you know, playing-wise, I, I would think – I would think, you know, losing grand finals is not good. You know? yeah. We could talk about the five that I won, but I played in eight and lost three. Mm. And uh, they were really hard ones to, to lose against Essendon. Don't worry about that, you know, yeah. especially the 80, 84 one with five goals up and that. Um, but getting to the grand final was the best time because it was about your club, about your teammates and how you can get involved in this game and everybody's looking out for it. Too. So that was the sort of be- best memories, you know, I think. Because mm-hmm. when you win them, you go flat because you just worked so hard to get there. Yeah. And the day after, two days later, you go, oh, God, we've won a, a, a grand final. I think most grand final nights after grand final, I was in bed by about one o'clock in the morning, you know, you know, yeah. which is because you're just tired. You're, you're just you're stuffed, gone, yeah. You know, but don't worry, we made up a three or four weeks <laughs> later, you know. <laughs> I can imagine. Hey, what were your, um, what were your parents like dipping in terms of your, your career? They would have been very, very proud. Were they at every game? Did they watch it? Did they keep, you know, newspaper no. clippings or stuff? No? Uh, well, okay. So, so newspaper clippings and every time you're on World of Sport or, you know, all those things that you did on TV and, you know, the flying doctors and neighbours and all yeah, that sort yeah. of stuff that I was involved with. Um, the parents are, like all parents, just hardworking parents. 
Um, Mum only came to about four games live. Oh, okay. Yeah. And mostly because she thought I was going to get hurt. Oh, uh, yep, yep. Um, so I'd go home, been reported. They'll be talking about me and they go, what happened? Oh, Mum, this is what happened. Eh, you'll be okay. <laughs> now I get four weeks. You know what? They don't like you. They yeah. didn't like you. You're an Italian. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you want something to eat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dad, Dad in the junior years came around and watched me play, and 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 my brother as well. And yeah. Dino, he played VFA. Uh, VFA. Well, actually, he was Hawthorne for a little while too. But, mm-hmm. um, and but but uh, no, because he worked on Saturdays, mate. It was overtime. Oh, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? They would work some overtime and listen on the radio on that. But uh, Mum, yeah, Mum only saw me play live. She was actually at the '89 Grand Final. Yeah. There was actually a photo, and she was right. I, I was going to get hurt, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's actually a photo in the age that I'm being put into a hot in, into the ambulance, and my mum is standing right next to the ambulance. Oh. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. It, interesting photo. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but, but they, yeah, look, they just let me do what I what I did. I'm sure your parents are the same. They just worked mm-hmm. hard. Yep. You you go out and do what you do, mm-hmm. and then come home by six o'clock and have dinner. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. You yeah. imagine they were proud of you after your footy career with the media stuff as well. You did yeah. boundary writing. Yeah, for so boundary long. writing. Yeah. yeah like what I, was the, What was the highlight of the boundary writing career? No, I just look. <laughs> uh, very funny. I thought Channel Seven was going to teach me how to use a microphone and. Yeah, they just threw you in, didn't they? Yeah, (laughs) they just threw me in. (laughs) I stuffed up. I I was trying to be a journalist, and you know, and I thought, you know, because back in those days, I had to knock on the doors and find out who's in and out and all that sort of stuff. And and you know, half the blokes I bashed anyway, and you know, and (laughs) and and it was all that secrecy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Even Lee Matthews would let me in when he was coaching Collingwood. Oh, really? You know, I I actually knocked on the door. The doorman opens the door. Yes, Dipper. Uh, Channel 7, you know, yep. uh, Boundary Rider, can I get the ins and the outs? He said, I'll be back. And uh, he came back. He said, Lee said, piss off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, hang on. You tell Lee Matthews it's me. Like, you know, <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, bloody hilarious. And uh, and then I decided, you know what? I'm not a journalist. I'm going to be who I am. I'm yeah. Dipper, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Dipper at the time wasn't Dipper, but I'm just going to be who I am. So mm. if it was too cold, I wouldn't go out there. It was raining. <laughs> I'd go in the bar if it was if it was uh, yeah I wouldn't hear one one thing about a coach what they were saying because I you know, yeah. knew everything anyway I'd just make up bullshit all the time <laughs> right <laughs> and then working with uh, Bruce McAvaney and Malcolm Blight and Dennis Committee and all these yeah. great names and Monday night oh, sorry, Friday night it was at the MCG mm-hmm. Saturday it was either Sydney or Brisbane or Sunday Sydney or Brisbane right but for nearly twelve years I travelled every weekend away yeah. like that. And we had the best times and, you know, it was working hard. We were working three games a weekend and bloody yeah. hard work, you know, yeah. trying to find something to say, trying to find an interview, you know, listening to people when you're doing an interview. Yeah. You know, I'd be looking at the scoreboard because I had a bet or something like that. <laughs> <You> go, <laughs> oh, it's hard to, hard to multitask, isn't it? Or you're trying to it's listen. and yeah. Hard to multitask and, and um, uh, yeah, some of the things that I – I'd been doing – there was one night when, when Dermot was playing for Collingwood, mm. right? It was at the MCG and they are playing against Carlton. They were playing against, he was playing against Mickey Martin. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Jeremy and I are great friends and, you know, the 60s between us, but we're like brothers, you know. And, and uh, so he's come over the boundary line and I've hugged him and whatever and he said, mate, I'm going to have a go. I'm going to have a go early on Mickey Martin, probably before the bounce of the ball. And I said, can I yeah. go with that? He goes, yeah, yeah, you go for it, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Bruce McAvane, hello, everybody, and welcome to the MCG's Friday night. And what a game ahead of us. We've got Collingwood versus Carlton. Now, let's have a look at the uh, side. Yeah. Now, let's cross down to the Dipper. Dipper, I noticed you and Dermot embrace him. Um, you know, he, uh, you're looking forward to seeing him in different colours. No, I'm not really, but I've got a feeling, Bruce, I'm telling you now, I know German inside out. I've got a feeling that he is up to something. I don't know. Oh, look at it. He's got Mickey Martin around it. <laughs> it was like oh, teamwork. Good. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then when he he looked at me, he put his thumbs up. I said, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of times on the boundary yeah. that, you know, I went missing and uh, because it was too cold. I'd be in, yeah. the, in the bar at the MCG having a beer and uh-huh. you know, the cameraman had to follow me in there. But, look, I loved it. Mm-hmm. And um, 
met a lot of great people. But the beauty about it was the fact that the players trusted me, mm-hmm. where I could go up to any player and I, and I could talk to them either way. Yeah, uh, which is which is great, especially after a grand final. They all mm. come to me, and and uh, even when I was uh, with Rex on the boundary for three AW, the players will come to me when the Brisbane Lions. You know, I had Michael Voss, or Black, everyone just lining up talking to me, sort of stuff. Yeah, you know? it was great. And, you know, a lot of respect. Yeah, so good. Oh, we miss having you on the boundary, Diffo. <laughs> you went on. We saw you on, on Neighbours, the Flying Doctors as well. You're on Burke's Backyard. You know. Burke's Backyard, <laughs> I'm Neighbours, I'm Flying ad. Doctors, yep. you yeah. name it. Yeah, I'm a celebrity. You know well, yeah, what, I'm a celebrity. What, what was your favourite one? How was I, I was, um, I'm a celebrity. How was that? Loved it. Competition. Yeah? But because of COVID, I had to do two weeks uh, in a hotel in Brisbane. Yeah. Uh, and then and then do my four weeks out there. But uh, no, I loved it. It was all about competition. and I mean – who would have thought that uh, I've eaten um, spiders, drinking pig's blood, yeah. fish eyes, rat's tails, all for food? And I loved it. And the people were terrific. And it was a competition. And I, mm. and I gave all I could, you know. What's the worst thing you had to eat while you're on it? Oh, well, the one, one dish. Yeah. And the three of us, Grand Genya and Timmy and myself from Googlebox and myself, had to finish this off to, to get them all the points. Yep. And it was pig's blood, two fish eyes, like big fish eyes. Yeah, it was yeah, a rat's yeah. tail. It was earthworms. And and we had to eat it all. Like, oh. oh, the stink of it, whatever. But <laughs> but we did it. And we yeah. absolutely did it. And uh, and because of that, we've become the champions, the mm. most the most points ever rewarded in any show on TV. So, you know. It was fantastic. I yeah. loved it. Would love to do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. And uh, what are you currently doing now, Dip? What's uh, what's the life for Dipper right now? Well, Dipper at the moment uh, is uh, on standby with obviously with COVID. Yeah. Because I, I revolve around a lot of functions, a lot mm. of uh, speaking arrangements, and I'm involved with a few people on GBS, Good Bloke Society, mm-hmm. which I started uh, five years ago with a couple of my mates and. That's about mental health, about business, and yep. you know, getting guys together, talk about how we can help each other and whatever. That's that's growing all the time. So GBS, uh, you can look that up on um, on the website if you, yep. you want to get involved with us, and um, and we're Australia wide. Um, I'm uh, yeah, just involved with yeah, a lot of things and got my fingers in, and and uh, hopefully when COVID um, re. So we can get out. I can yeah. get out myself. So you know, yeah. I need to. I need to see people. Yeah, that's it. A hundred percent, mate. Hey, do you have a before we get to the ten quick questions? My favorite part. Do you have a tip for the grand final this week, Dipper? Who's winning it? I think Melbourne wins. Yeah, I think Melbourne are mature enough to uh, to really, you know, take the mantle this year and go. You know what? We've done all the hard work. I'm loving the doggies. I'm loving what these two sides bring to the table. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm thinking Melbourne, yeah. Yeah, yeah, as do I. Uh, all right, let's get to the 10 quick questions. And they are Go. thanks to Simmons Homes and Simmons Finals Festival on the Footy Live app. So everyone, make sure you download the Footy Live app. It's the best out there. All right, question one, Dip. Here we go. If On the on the theme of houses, if you could build a house anywhere in Australia, where would it be? St. Andrews Backbridge. Oh, yeah, like St. Andrews. Good. Got a good uh, brewery there, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah, and the golf uh, club. Yeah, yeah. If you could add anything to your current home, what would it be? Swimming pool. Swimming pool. What is your favourite food? Oh, this is got pasta. Pasta has to be pasta. Of course. Pasta. Of course. Um, your favourite teammate of all time? Oh, uh, Johnny Platt. Johnny Platt. Nice. Uh, your favourite travel destination outside of Australia? Well, I've got a TV show called uh, Dipper's uh, Dipper's Destinations. Yeah. So, um, Aspen. Aspen. Oh, yeah. Very good. If you could coach any any AFL team right now, besides Hawthorne, who would it be? I would love, love to coach Collingwood. Collingwood. Yeah, mm. nice. If you could have dinner with any celebrity in the world, who would it be? I've had dinner with all the celebrities. In oh, the that, world. I was going to say, who would you like to have dinner again <laughs> with? <laughs> um, I'd love to have dinner again with Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, Sly. How was he? Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, we went around Australia for about ten days, and I just introduced him to do because he was he brought out Rambo. Yeah, and, uh, and we've become sort of good friends, and and uh, <laughs> yeah, 
some of the great names and stories. I mean, you know, his, his storylines like every talent, you know, hard-working parents, you know, when he wrote his script, um, mm. they didn't want him to play it and he hung yeah. on to it, you know, and that sort of stuff. And now look at you, you know, yeah. great. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> right, as, a, as an actor, Dipper, if The Sopranos or Seinfeld made a comeback, which would you rather be cast in? Sopranos. The Sopranos. How good Love to do The Sopranos. It'll be so good. Yeah. You know the movie's coming out, Dipper. Oh, it's a movie, yeah? They're doing a movie, yeah, so it's going to wow. be back. It's going to be about Christopher's dad. Right. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, um, the actor has passed on, but uh, yeah. it'd yeah, be James interesting Candle to see. Feeny, yeah. yeah, but I've just watched that uh, American Gangster stuff, oh, you Ameri- know, and... Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I love that. I love, yeah. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> I love to play a part in a gangster movie. It'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what's your favourite movie? Oh, it going to have to be Rocky. Like, I yeah. know it sounds a bit silly, but when Rocky first came out, yeah. every sports person, every athlete related to that movie, related mm. to it. And that music got you going. Yeah, you that's know? it. Good. And uh, the last one, number 10, the, the all-important one. What is your favourite song of all time, Dipper? My favourite song of all time is um, Caught in the Trap by Elvis Presley. Brilliant. I Caught love in it. the Trap. I just go back because I love you too much, baby. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a drummer, so I love yeah. playing the drums in that yeah. Nice, as am I, as you can see in the background. Yeah, I can see the background, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you played drums as a kid, did you, Dipper? I, did you, I, you still I play? Played, yeah, I still play. If there's any band out there, we, we go out to a club back <laughs> in the day. The last person I, I hijacked the drums with was um, Shannon Noll. <laughs> oh, did playing. you? I was on stage with him, then I got, I got a mess of the big tom-tom, grabbed the two sticks off the, off the, uh, off the drummer, he played snare and hi hat, and I played cymbal and tom tom. Oh, how good! It was, was here. <laughs> what about me? It isn't fair. What kit? What kit do you have, Dip? Do you have a kit now? I I, I used to have the pill pill kit. Yeah, right? pill kit. Uh, and yeah. then I started on a on a star kit, which my dad bought me, and then and then I went to a pill kit, and um, uh, yeah, like I, you know, there's three songs. If I ever go, if if I ever go, was Cox, you know, Coxie? Yeah. Yeah, he's a drummer, right? Yeah. Um, I remember him and um, Brian uh, Cadden and, and a few others were playing at the Crown Casino. Coxie had to go to the toilet. Go, Jimba, come and play for me. Oh, I jump on, yeah. <laughs> and I played. I played with Brian Cadden. <laughs> <laughs> and then he turned around and said, now you, piss off. <laughs> you know, I, was, I was hopeless. There's three songs I love playing. You know, yeah. Suspicious Minds. Suspicious Minds, yeah. Caught in a trap, right? Suspicious yeah. Minds, yeah. From that was Presley. Um, Gloria. And oh yeah, thing, right? you can't go wrong with those three songs, yeah. right? Yeah. They're, you know, they're really, they're really good sort of, uh, you know, drumming, drumming solos in that, and they uh, with the beat, of course. But uh, no, I love it. What about yourself, you play yeah. in a band or? Oh, I don't play in a band. I play dad. So dad was in a band back in the day. So I right. play some songs with him, a bit of Rolling right. Stones, Beatles, that sort of stuff, the old stuff. So oh, terrific. Um, yeah, I'm in an apartment now, so I've got to have the electric kit. Yeah, um, but uh, but I did well, have an acoustic kit. Yeah. Well, um, when uh, when I was a young fella, um, <laughs> Dad, yeah, always wanted me to play drums at the weddings. You know? Oh go, yeah. You go and play drums. No, yeah, <laughs> go and play the drums. Go, the people want to watch you play the drums. You know? I was a, I was a skinhead back in those days. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then. And then, uh, you know, an Italian wedding, you know, quanto, quanto, ding, ding, oh, yeah. ding, ding. Tina, that little Luna, pa, pa, pa. Yeah, mum loves that song. <laughs> you oh, know, God. at quando, the Italian quando, clubs, quando, yeah. Quanto, quanto, quanto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, Dipper, I'd love to have a, a jam with you yeah. one day, mate. We should get together, have a jam, uh, have a beer. Yeah, thanks for today, Dipper. It's been an absolute pleasure, mate. I could, uh, I could chat to you all day. I really appreciate your time. Uh, thanks very much. It's a great uh, time of the year, finals time. Love yeah. it. Uh, wish we could be at the MCG, but let's all get back there next year.